Now, do not buy a car until you've listened to this next piece. Car prices are expected to plummet this year as global car production picks up after years of coronavirus disruption. A recent report by the investment group UBS says car manufacturing is set to exceed sales by 6% this year. The move will result in an oversupply of more than 5 million vehicles, with car makers already preparing for a price war. Well, let's talk to uh, Jim Saker, the director of the Centre for Automotive Management at uh, Loughborough University in the UK. Jim, um, welcome back. Lovely to see you. It seems like only yesterday like I was sitting here boring on about uh, pandemic-induced chip shortages and coronavirus production delays. I mean, how do we get to a place where we're talking about oversupply being a major issue? I, I think uh, it, the, the, their study is quite interesting, but I think it, it does paint a very different picture to what is actually happening on the, on the ground, because it's going to vary from one country to another as to the level of supply coming through, which manufacturers are able to supply and which manufacturers are not. So most of the, the study is based on what they're projecting to do, with no necessary guarantee that they will be able to supply those numbers. OK, so which types of cars are going to lose uh, most value and which sectors are going to be the most resilient in uh, light of all of this? Well, I think it, it's interesting. If you go back to Toyota and the, the RAV4, uh, there's a wait list of 12 months on those currently in the UK. So are you looking at a, a time whereby in 12 months' time there's going to be an oversupply or are most of the companies simply backfilling orders and order bank they already have? The cars that are likely to suffer the most will be the internal combustion engine vehicles. Obviously, in China, they've had a, a bit of a, sort of a, a market downturn uh, regarding uh, internal combustion engine vehicles because of the uh, July the 1st deadline that they've placed. And um, Volkswagen and SIAC uh, had to invest $537 million in giving subsidies to reduce the price. So it's a very much more complicated picture than the study actually reflects. It's not as simple as they're saying. Uh, back in January, uh, Tesla cut uh, their car prices by thousands of dollars. I mean, what impact are we seeing on the EV market? If you were a Tesla buyer who bought then, presumably you'd be rather cheesed off now owning a car that is worth rather less than you thought. Very much so. Um, if you bought it outright, then you've got a problem with the residual value uh, when you want to exchange it. The Tesla reaction was definitely because uh, Chinese manufacturers like BYD are coming onto the market with really competitive product at a very much lower price point. So therefore, the, they were going to be in a very difficult position going forward unless they actually undertook a, a price drop. So residual values have been shot you know, right the way through the Tesla range. So what does this mean for demand? I mean, presumably, um, it's not going to lessen. Presumably, consumers are going to wait for this oversupply to trickle down and translate into uh, lower purchase prices? Well, I think a lot of people, it's very much dependent on the governments of the various countries. The EU has got a 2035 uh, deadline for the uh, zero emissions, 2030 in the UK. Now, most people will wait until you get nearer that point before they start thinking of buying an electric vehicle or an alternative fuel vehicle, because fundamentally the technology will change over a 7, 10, 12 year period. So therefore, you know, buying a, an EV now, unless you're going to get rid of it fairly quickly, isn't in fact a smart move. You know, it, it's basically you need to wait until you get um, the latest technology before you get the uh, government stepping in and placing a de deadline on it. Uh, we've been uh, talking about uh, new car sales and oversupply. Uh, uh, what does this mean for used car sales? I mean, how, uh, how is it going to affect used car prices? Well, I think the used car market will, in Europe will stay fairly steady because what you've got is... Historically, in most of Europe, the oldest ever car park, that means basically the oldest range of cars currently on the road that you've ever had since the start of the industry. Because of the undersupply during the COVID era, most of the cars on average are a lot older than they would, you know, they would normally be, expect them to be. So therefore, the used car market is likely to be quite buoyant because people are going to need to start changing their vehicles and may not want to go into a new one uh, straight away. So... I would say that used cars in, in the UK, they went up 27% the year before last. You know, it's a very st steady, solid market at the moment. Uh, given a car is uh, the most expensive thing most of us buy, apart from our houses, you can forgive purchases for being rather unsettled by all of this. I mean, 
What is your advice to uh, car buyers who might be now slightly unnerved after this story knocks around the motoring press around the world? Well, I think it does depend which country you're in and what um, the market currently offers. If you took in the UK at the moment, you take Volvo, you can't buy actually a Volvo electric vehicle. You can only hire them on uh, personal contract hire. So therefore, in reality, you're only hiring the vehicle. So therefore, it won't matter if you're doing that because you're paying uh, basically a rental. Um, in some markets, you can't do that. But, you know, the markets that do that, most people will be going, well, OK, I'll take this contract on a bit like my mobile phone contract and I'll keep it for three years and then hand it back at the end of the, uh, that term. So, you know, it's looking around and saying what is available in the country that you're operating in and then coming and coming up with a sensible solution. Jim, good to talk to you. Thanks very much for coming on the programme. Jim Saker, Director of the Centre for Automotive Management at Loughborough University in the UK.